So hi everyone, I'm Curran, and uh, this is uh, Splitting Charts Part 2. So in Part 1, we looked at how to make a stacked bar chart and a grouped bar chart. And in this session, what I want to cover is using circles and angles and circular things to represent data. So I'll just give you a preview of the examples that we're going to cover. So this is a circle that represents the population of the world. And then you can split circles horizontally, add color to them, and then make pie charts and uh, donut charts and these polar area diagrams, which is like a, a cool variation of a pie chart. And then do all of these in small multiples. So you're splitting the data and then making a lot of these different uh, charts. So that's what I'm going to cover today. All of this material can be found here, github.com slash current slash screencasts, splitting charts. So yeah, to find this material, if you find this repository, current slash screencasts on GitHub, it's in splitting charts. And I'm going to, you can scroll down, there's a big list of examples. And I'm going to start from uh, this one, getting circular, example 20. So if you open example 20, you should see this, and then you could use the left and right arrows to navigate and see the code. And feel free to copy paste this code in anything that you want to use it for. You know, your own work, that's fine. It's all under MIT license. So when you use circles to represent data, um, I, I've seen a lot of people get it a little bit wrong where area does not correspond with the actual data value. But I think um, when, what's best is when you use circles that the area, the, the pixels that are filled in, should correspond to the, the data values. So this first example is just drawing one circle that represents the population of the world. And this is a variation of another example that was just one bar. And this will be our starting point for dealing with circles. And so the code is, a lot, is similar to the previous examples. Uh, and the main difference is it's using circles here. So when you use circles in D3, um, you append these circle tags, which are part of SVG. And then rather than X and Y, it's uh, CX and CY. I think it stands for center X and center Y of the circle. So this is how you can make a circle. Um, so this is all that this pattern is something I've covered in the previous uh, tutorial. So I'm not going to go into that much detail here. But we're using an X scale on the X column, which um, in this case is sort of degenerate. But that will lay the foundation for later on doing uh, small multiples. And then I want to talk about this radius scale. So R, this R property of SVG circles stands for radius. That's the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Um, and so when you use a radius scale, uh, I'm using a square root scale. So that will apply a square root transformation on the data because, um, because of the relationship between area <clears throat> and radius with circles. Because we want the, the area to correspond to the, the data value not the radius itself. So if we just mapped the data values directly to the radius values, then the area would be, the, <clears throat> would be proportional to the square of the data value, which we don't really want, right? So to get it so that area corresponds to the data values, we need to use a square root scale. If you want to have it like honest, you know, such that, such that the number of fills and pixels corresponds to the, the, the data, like if the data represents a count, that starts at zero is like the number of things, then yeah, it should be a square root scale and the range that start at zero. Because imagine that the data value of zero should be a size, a circle whose radius is zero, right? And so if you give it, if the input is zero, but the radius of the circle is one or two or three, whatever this, the minimum value here is, then it's a little bit like misleading, you know? So let's see what it looks like if we split it out this way. So this is kind of like a bar chart, you know, a similar concept where we're using an ordinal scale uh, and we're using the same square root radius scale as before, but 
now we're just showing these different values. So let's see what this looks like in the code. So the data set is different. Um, and then, so actually nothing is, is different at all because the X scale that refers to the X column is now evaluating to these different values. Whereas before, uh, there was just one thing. So the X, the X column in the first example was set to name, which is world. That's where world comes from there. But there's only one value in the data for that. So in the next one, the code is basically the same, uh, but the X column is set to country now. And there's five different values of the country. So here we're seeing this X scale really being used and, and splitting apart the circles. So yeah, I mean, it's always interesting to see how China and India are much, actually much, much bigger than the US. And so similarly, uh, here's how you can split it up by religion. Uh, and this is following the same pattern as the first set of examples where we, we were using bars in, in the last tutorial. Um, so again, everything is exactly the same. And this is using the tilted axis labels that were covered in the last tutorial as well. And let me just show you, just for the sake of comparison, what it looks like with bars. So here's the world population as a single bar and as a bar chart and um, the religions as a bar chart. And so it's a little bit different in what you in what you really perceive. Like compare this one to this one. And I think this is because we're using area and it's just the, like we perceive area quite differently than length, than we perceive length. And so, you know, bar charts are in a way like more perceptually reliable because you can compare these lengths directly and you can see that India is a little bit smaller than China very clearly in the, in the bar chart. But if you use circles, it's like, well, it's not as clear in a way. But I just wanted to sort of explore the space of the all possible ways to use circles to visualize data. What's the benefit of using a circle plot? I just wanted to see how it could be done in D3. I don't know if there is any benefit. So if you have data like this, where you're trying to show one quantitative variable and one um, ordinal variable, which is the countries, then I think a bar chart is actually more clear. Well, if you use different colors in the circle, you can probably pick it up. Ah, which brings us to the next, whoops, our next example, <laughs> which is um, adding colors to the circles. So this doesn't give us any benefit in this actual visualization, but it's sort of the foundation for making a pie chart where if the slices were all the same color, you, you couldn't distinguish them. So let's see what this looks like in the code. And this is similar to the examples from last time where it was bars and we were adding colors to the bars. So we have a color column, which is the same as the X column. And then we have a color scale, which is this D3 category 10 built-in color scale. And then we set the domain of the color scale to be all the data values for, from the color column. And then in this uh, D3 code here, we're just setting the fill, the, filled, the fill color of each circle to be the color scale evaluated for uh, the value of the color column. So this is how we add colors to these circles. And so the next thing I'm going to do is explain how to make a pie chart. Uh, 